Hi, I'm K Rule 34. I'm still the most erotic Carol man in the internet. Even though you haven't seen a commentated video from me in quite some time. And I just turned on the music. So yeah, today we will be doing another kind of tournament recap. Even though different to other times, I don't want to talk about my results that much, but rather show you some K Rule gameplay, explain my thought process and well, just tell you pretty much what I did so that you may be able to learn a little about the game or not depends on if you even want to learn from me like I am not a pro player or something but maybe it will help you a little so yeah I did not do a video like this in quite some time uh, I did join very few tournaments in that time School does make it kind of hard for me and actually um, the two weeklies I went to before this one that was like I think within two months uh, those two were and I got top eight in both of them placing fourth and fifth in those two weeklies without ever having gotten a top 8 placement before in any kind of tournament so yeah also I'm recording this a little different than the other times because I'm actually on my laptop which I believe is quite better to talk about stuff and especially to show you my thought process because I have a nice tool in my recording program that I will definitely use so yeah I have to re-record this bullshit right now because I had done this on analysis today already and it seems like the microphone just didn't want to work. That was nearly two hours of video just gone. Yeah, you can imagine I was very happy about that but well I'm trying to see the positive side we will be watching one game from every set I played together. I will talk a little about the set and we will look at some plays I did in these games. And depending on the character I will also talk a little about the matchup and other stuff. So I don't know if I will do one or two videos. The original one would have been two and probably this version will be as well. So let's start with my winners round one against Cobra the Terry player. We will be jumping right into it and just looking a little at it. So in the beginning there's nothing too special that I did. Just trying to pressure him a little, reading his jump off of ledge with a back air. Zoning a little because well that's Carol for you guys and just trying to pressure him to do dumb stuff wall him out with my pair and sometimes near even though that's rare and landing a stray back air hit to take the first stop it will sometimes lag a little i don't know why i just know that it does so yeah sadly get, did not get the suck there and here you saw he made one great mistake that you never should in a situation like this. He was in shield probably expecting me to try dash attacking or something. And I just ran back and back aired. Which yeah, of course it's better not to get hit by it. But I believe it's quite a mix up. So it can happen that you get hit by it. Sour spot bear. Sending him backwards. But here's the great problem. He just could have air, do air dodged in or something. Gone to ledge at best. But he jumped. He jumped into the second back air. Which means he does not have a jump anymore. So he still could air dodge in. But probably was scared. And I thought he may be scared. And would 
rather not add or trying to predict me reading an air dodge. Well, I didn't and I just, just went for another back air, killing him in the process. And this stock is why I really wanted to show you this game in this set. I will always pick the game that in my eyes is most interesting. You see he's at 14% that this shit works is dumb. And here, here, you already see what will happen. 14% and he jumped here, trying to down air me. I have no idea why the fuck my get up attack hit him, don't ask me, but he got sent away. And now he is off stage without a jump. Which means he has two main options. Or uh, let's say three main, yeah, pretty much three main options. There are smaller ones, but he could try recovering high with a weird uppy, which would definitely not be a good option. He could try going down and then uppying to ledge from here. Or he could go for a side B high. That arrow is a little bigger than the others, which is because that's what he did. He had these three main choices and I thought, well, as I already said, Uppy in this situation, high Uppy would be kinda weird. And going low, he's probably scared of because um, I could read him and kill him for it because Terry can't really recover from below. His last option would have been to just air dodge to ledge and I have to say that would have been the best option by far for him. Even though I could have read it and punished him with a down or back air. But I thought he would very likely go for a side B. In this case, as, he is, uh, as his back is turned to the stage with crack shoot, which he did. I predicted it and tried to back air him for it. The back air was a sour spot again, sadly. But now he's in a, an even worse situation, I feel like. Because what options does he have now? He could again immediately up B, which probably, in my eyes, high up B is not a good option with uh, Terry. Don't get me wrong. But I think it would have been the best mix-up in this case. Again, he could have air dodged to ledge, but was probably scared of me punishing it. So this time he wanted to go down and up B to ledge. Getting a little away from there, scared that I would hit him otherwise. The thing is, I predicted that he would try going low and so I just ran off knowing he still had no jump. I just ran off, neared him and the forward air just for good measure so that he definitely can't make it back. This interaction is definitely why I wanted to show you guys this game. We will get, uh, we will just watch it again in normal speed and now you also know what my thought process in this moment was. That's how I won the first game and the second game I did win afterwards. And well, after that, I had to play a snake I already knew and honestly knew I could not beat. SP1, probably one of the best uh, Wi-Fi snacks in Europe from what I believe and from what I've heard from results and everything and I'm not good against snakes so he was my next opponent and I did not believe that I could win but we will still look at one game that had especially one great interaction in my eyes that I really want to talk about. So this is the first set. The first game of the set, 
none of us obviously have a win at this point and well snake go burr I hadn't played a snake in quite a long time so I was just overwhelmed by all the explosives at first here I was so lucky I misinput an up B but the grenade immediately cancelled it so yeah Hmm. As you can already see, we are already at the most important situation I want to talk about. So I did a very dumb stuff at this point. I forward air the grenade. And now, Nerd at his shield, immediately F tilting after, predicting him doing, well, something aggressive out of shield that I could armor through, which I did. He's at 11% at this point, note that, and got F tilted, missing the tech back there. So now, let's zoom out a little. Let's look at this situation a little more. So what we have here now, a snake having missed the tech at this point, that looks wrong well so we have snake lying down here in a tech situation he has three options roll in roll out or staying where he is so what was my thought process cannonball is a good tech chase option which is why i often use it in situations like this and in this situation, first off, I kinda excluded roll in as an option that he would do. Because most commonly with Blunderbuss, you tech chase by shooting a cannonball that will cover especially neutral getup and roll away in this situation. So, you as the carol yourself mostly stay where I am and with the suck cover this area where he will roll if he rolls in to kind of try covering every option you can dodge the cannonball with good timing on your get up though which is why i don't do it that often and i kind of thought that he would not roll in because just what i what i said most carols will just stand there and you suck so he had two options and that was neutral get up or get up attack and roll away. And in this situation I just felt like okay it's quite possible that the cannonball will hit him. Cannonball into back air can be a true combo even though it wasn't in this situation as I definitely know afterwards. So. As I expected him to get hit by the cannonball, I did not even try covering the roll-in option, but just ran in as the cannonball was shot. He did get hit by my cannonball, and I immediately went for a back air that wasn't true, and yet hit, taking the stock. Again, in fast, he did. He made one mistake at 11% and he died for it. He made one bad choice and that's immediate death. That's the art of K Rule. The character is very, very scary if you do it right. Here in this situation, Snake was going high. That's not something uncommon. So. I tried reading an air dodge. As I was at this point, I believe most snakes would just immediately air dodge, predicting me to do an up air or something like that to hit him, which is why I waited a little moment and used back air, trying to catch an air dodge, yet he air dodged a little later than I anticipated. Also the fast fall came through for him, so my back air missed. Then let's get going. Here I failed my recovery. I went high, but Nikita kinda saved me from any greater punishment. So I'm playing kinda defensively at this point. He 
panic jump in there because I realized if I really challenge him, I will probably not win this game. I did hit an air at this point, dash attack, and again he tried to go high. Snake often goes high recovering, which is why I read it again this time. Not anticipating him to air dodge, but really expecting him to use a B, which he did. And it gave me op an opportunity to hit him and kill him. I just made a shortcut because I was kinda paranoid, because I don't remember putting that song in my playlist, but works. Which is why I actually um, had quite a good lead at this point, which I didn't really expect. The rest of the match is not as exciting to watch as interactive. He does bring it back quite well. He is a better player, that's for sure. And because there is, n there are no really great plays, I actually is expected him to get hit by Cannonball there, which is why I went for the back air. Here, th that forward air always is a good idea, I feel like after the nair. Because many people will not want to just to just use their double jump in a situation like that, because it's an important resource. So people will be like, mm, I will rather try getting to the ground instead of just jumping. Which is why reading them going for any option that's not jump, which is pretty much what this pair covers, is effective. So yeah, he did bring it back quite well at this point. I will lose my stock very soon, I believe. Yeah, it's definitely not taking long at this point. I'm losing my stock because I dropped shield too early because I expected him to just run up and grab me, which he didn't. And I will just quickly talk about how the rest of the set went before we go on, on to the next set. So, um, as you will see soon, he is bringing it back quite a lot at this point. I tried getting a spike here, caught him slacking, down throw, F tilt, takes game one and I actually win. Even though I really didn't expect to take a game of him. And game two and three kinda showed why I did lose the set. Even though game three was pretty close and ended in a very tilting way for me as a K rule. I pretty much just was off stage for a whole stock getting Nikita because god damn it what the hell does K will do about that if Snake does it correctly. So yeah I did lose the set 1-1 one, one, I was in sets and well obviously at this point I had already given up on top 8 hoping to maybe get a 2 or 3 2 after not joining a tournament for quite some time. So yeah, that was my goal at this point. And next I had to fight Pille or Pill, I don't know how his name is pronounced English or German way, the Diddy Kong player. So first off, I hardly love that, that you yourself will watch the video here who played Diddy. If so, I'm sorry, but hell, that was by far the most annoying Diddy Kong I have played yet. Game 1, I was still way too tilted from the last snake match and just kinda did bullshit for the whole game, losing, getting too stocked in the process on Pokemon Stadium 2. Afterwards, Town and City is a pick I do not use that often because I feel like it's kinda risky, but I believe I will start playing that stage more often. Especially, yeah, I just feel like that stage is good for me, as this game will show. I did pick Town and City game to beat him quite well and 
that's why I really was confused. As for game three, which will be, which we will be watching now, he just ran it back at town and city. Because I really feel like that was not a good stage choice for him. But well, let's just look at it. In this game we have quite a lot to explain and un unpack again. So in the beginning I... Yeah, I got combo hard 70%. Which, spoiler, isn't great for me. I didn't expect my jab to hit, which is why I was just doing jab 1 at first. But I still got jab 2 and 3, which is kinda good. You will often see me, as you already saw against SP1 for example, I will just land on somebody with Nair and immediately go for jab or F tilt. No matter if, uh, no matter if it's on shield or if I hit. Except for hitting a strong Nair, then I will definitely not go for one of those if the opponent is higher than like 30%. Or if the opponent is at 100, around 100, I think characters like, like Diddy Kong a little lower and I hit a weak Nair, I will go for a dash attack which is a true combo if he doesn't the eye out. So yeah, we just wanted to quickly talk about that. I think it's a great option for K rule. And let's watch on. He did a lot of monkey flip during the set. So I tried reading it quite often. In this situation, I r did not really predict monkey flip. I just thought, okay, he's in the corner. He's in shield. I think he will be trying to approach and kind of get center stage, to get some stage control. Which is why I jumped, or for example, uh, to be more exact, why I dashed forward a little, jumped and threw out a back air. And he did try what I expected, in this case so it was a monkey flip, I actually just wanted to hit the back air to send him away. But in this case, the monkey flip was, of course, in the air. He did not take that because most people don't. And I just reacted and up aired him for it. By the way, why I'm uh, just quickly talking about why I'm picking Town and City and why I think it's quite a risky stage. First off, what's good for Rule, you don't play off stage that much. The blast zones are very close, which makes the stage risky in my eyes. But for both players, and Carol does benefit it a lot with great kill power. In a public arena, I for example killed a Diddy Kong with back air on rage at 40 at ledge. So it's kind of a risky stage. Many characters have great combos that kill to the side. For example, Meta Knight or Green Ninja. I did actually just uh, another quick note. I, I'm missing the right word. In the first tournament, I got top 8 where I got 4th. I actually got top 8 winner side by defeating a Meta Knight player. Um, and game 2 after I was down 1 0, we played on Town and City and. Even the commentator, who was a Meta Knight main, or still is a Meta Knight main, said that this probably isn't a good pick for K. Rule because Mid Meta Knight just has his combos that really kill here. Well, I won the, I won the game with a free stock. So, I'm quite... I like Town and City, it's also a big stage. Helping K. Rool to kind of play defensively. It's a stage where I feel like neutral is more important. And for example disadvantage less important. Which is incredibly important for K. Rool because that's not a good disadvantage state. Let's say that. So yeah. Watching on the match. I tried pressuring a little. A little. Did not run enough there to get the grab and hit a weak Nair. I, I already said I do go for the dash attack there. 
of definitely in this situation, not because I thought it would be a true combo. Because that obviously wasn't but. I still knew. Either he would miss the tag, which would lead to him getting killed. Or he would tag in place, which would lead to him getting killed. Or he would roll away. In which case, I just would have dashed a little further and it would have gotten him killed. Roll in was pretty much the only thing I would not have covered in this situation. So, if he did not do that, I would get the first kill and you see he tagged in place, losing his stock. He, al he already tried this setup in game 2, didn't hit it there, but this game he did. And now, watch. This is probably one of the most important things to talk about, I feel like. This... Uh, one second. That trick was definitely not supposed to be in my playlist, what the hell? So yeah, in this spot, he's at 0% and that's where Town and City shines for K rule. The side platforms, we are incredibly close to the blast zones. You see already, I am throwing out a neutral air here, anticipating him trying to hit me. I hope the music is alright, this track is incredibly quiet, so you are probably not hearing anything right now. But yeah, let's go on. I hit him with neutral air and he could have air dodged away in direction of center stage, which definitely would have been the safest thing he could have done. But he didn't, which I kinda thought he would. He just didn't react fast enough. So I did get a grab and immediate back throw. Doesn't quite kill because, well, way too low percent, but... What is he going to do now? This is... I love doing, in this situation, using blunderbuss. Because... What are his options? Diddy Kong, back here. Has pretty much two major options to recover. He could try charging barrels, but I honestly didn't expect him to. He never did something like that. Probably wasn't confident with his angles to really recover with barrels from a place like that. So he would monkey flip. I was very sure about that. Only thing I didn't know, if he would jump before he did it, or if he wouldn't. And so, I use Blunderbuss, because the cannonball I shoot will cover here, and it will cover if he jumps before his monkey flip. And right after shooting the cannonball, I drop through the platform while sucking to pretty much cover every other angle his side B could use. Trying to catch him like that, catching him off guard with no monkey flip as a resource. And well, as you already saw, it did work. He did the low monkey flip, got sucked for it. I don't know, I think he could have made it back, but probably thought he could monkey flip again, which he couldn't, and just died. He died from getting hit at zero. And now you may think, whoa, that's... At first, this the interaction doesn't look that deep, but there was quite some thought process behind it. So, that was definitely why, uh, why K-34 would be showing us this set right now. And, yeah, partly. It was the second most important part, because now... The real mind games are coming into play. He's at 8% and watch me now. He's up there walking forward too much, getting hit by my up B. Which I immediately followed up with a forward air because why would I not? So now here in disadvantage, he can either jump 
or drop to the ground with an air dodge or just pressing nothing or throwing his banana. So as I already explained in the match against Snake, many people do not like jumping at this point, which is very understandable. It would have put him in a very bad spot as well, but because I read him going down, I immediately thought, so what could he do? He could air dodge away, which probably would have been the safest thing to do, but I could have just run up and grabbed because of the end leg. He also could just drop down doing nothing, which would be dumb. Or he could drop down throwing his banana, which he did. Which is why I went for a dash attack, hoping to get the timing just right to catch his banana as he throws it. Just like I did. Now he's in disadvantage, back here at the platform and seeing how he played this whole game. I already knew. Now there will probably be a monkey flip. I'm still an end leg, but I'm already anticipating. I will dash back a little and wait for him to land with monkey flip and then throw the banana at him. What happens? Exactly what I said. He did monkey flip very often, which made it predictable in this situation. And let me get the banana. And now this. I got, I grabbed him out of the banana. I think I could have down tilted him. Could have led to a kill as well, I believe. But don't know. Just didn't really occur to me in that moment. I was kind of scared. I mean, I wasn't really scared. I was up three stocks to one. I just thought maybe he can react fast enough so that my down tilt doesn't hit. F smash probably as well, down smash n definitely wouldn't have hit. Dash attack could have, but I really couldn't have gotten any follow ups there. So I grabbed. And what doing out of a grab at this point? I think most carols would have gone for a down throw and somehow trying to read their mash or reading them to not mash. But I didn't. I'm Use, I feel like I'm one of the carols using F throw at mid to high percent the most, definitely. One thing I never got in this tourney that I love doing because it works pretty often, way more often than you may think. If you just drop down from the halo platform, shooting a cannonball in the direction of your opponent, many will shield or try doing something there and if you just run in, grab them and immediately F throw them into the cannonball. That can lead to an immediate kill, which I do get sometimes. In this scenario, I thought, okay, so it's pretty, I, I do think that he will land on the platform that's just there at the side. The other platform already screwed him over like 15 seconds ago. So, I could throw him onto the platform, him probably not even expecting F throw and with online and everything you and panicking he would probably not react to it. Landing on the platform, missing the tech, giving me a chance to just get another follow up. What happened? He didn't land just as well as I thought on the platform, but he did not react in his panic. Landed on the platform, I did get my back air and well, at, uh, at what percent was he? At 68, so near to the blast zones, town and city against 141% rage, King K rules, sweet back air, he died. He died because he got hit by my up B recovery at 8.5%. I think you see kind of a... I'm missing the word for it help. I don't know the English word. You kind of see a motive here. A motive of how K rule can definitely play competitively. As a, and I do feel like if you want to play King K. Rule competitively, 
advantage is incredibly important and especially reading your opponents. I often hear people saying, if I post clips, if I get stuff like that, they are saying like, yeah, but he was playing so awful, he just died wrong or... And I feel like people don't really get, you know, within the heat of the battle. You just don't always choose the right options and also Smash Bros is not that is probably my most important lesson to y'all. Smash Bros is not about always doing the optimal thing. But it's also it's more about trying to know what your opponent is doing and punishing what he is doing. For example, the most optimal thing in the snake game uh, that we have seen before, as he didn't tag, would have been to just stay there, just holding neutral B, to kinda ensure that I would cover more options. Yet I didn't, because I read him getting hit by the cannonball there by the, uh, because of rolling back, and this is why I didn't get only like a cannonball hit that's 13% or something, but actually a kill. So let's also watch this again in normal speed. He actually, you can see this, Diddy died very early, twice in this game, because of one small mistake, especially on the second stock. It's quite difficult if you not if you are not um, confident with your upbeat angles as a Diddy Kong main. In the situation where I put him in the second stock, he really has no choice but to monkey flip, and for that I pretty much covered every option. I do believe getting hit by the cannonball would definitely have been better for him, and I would not have gotten the kill there. But well, that's how it be sometimes. And I do think we will definitely be doing two videos again, but I think we will be looking at one more game in this video. So I was 2 on 1 after beating Pill 2-1 in the best of 3. In this, I dare to say, very destructive game 3. So now let's look at the next match. We will not spend a lot of time in this game because honestly, this set was probably the least interesting of this of this entire run. There wasn't that much happening. His connection wasn't too great, but honestly, especially because rarely but sometimes my connection can be bad too. I'm not a person to just call a lag test as long as it's, as it's still playable. I will be playing it also. I won game one, so why? I didn't really have a problem with that. We went town and city game one. Well, I do like it as you may know at this point. So, good for me, even though he did get a lead quite early. But I definitely adapted in this game. I did beat him game one. But it wasn't nearly as oppressive as could have been. So let's immediately look at the start because that's something I also like to do. See me jumping off, le off the platform, immediately jumping back. It's kind of testing the waters like I do that quite sometimes. Just seeing what exactly does my opponent want to do. And, well, just jumping back to get back to safety, definitely something you can do there. And something I also do sometimes. Another option I like to do is just, um, when on platform. Of course, that stuff only works on stage with plat where you spawn on a platform. I immediately go down here and be reverse a blunderbuss. 
shooting the cannonball in this direction. Why is that a good option in my eyes? Well, if I for example just drop down and uh, shoot blunderbuss immediately, which is also why this kind of testing the water is better than just doing that, your opponent could just immediately run off, especially like by left, hitting an aerial with quite some range, immediately getting the first hit in the match. If I'm doing it like I just said, going back, be reversing the blunderbuss, this cannot happen because I'm way too far away. He could, the only real thing that he could do and he, he just would need to completely read me doing that, to actually pull that off, is immediately going like that to hit me. Which nobody will do, not, let's not, let's not pretend something that's bullshit, nobody will do that if he's, he, if he's not completely expecting me to do that. And pretty much nobody does that, especially because I don't always do it. For example, this game you see I don't, or later we will have a game where you see another option that I kinda like using. So. If I am down here, Cannonball does cover quite a lot in front of me. What's also better about going back before shooting blunderbusses, if for example at a spot, if somebody with a reflector goes back to this, going back to this place, drops down, reflecting the blunderbuss, I will not be able to react before the Cannonball gets back to me and either I resuck it, Putting me in a situation I do not get hit, but I have to reshoot it, which definitely is very dangerous to me. The opponent has a reflector and could just jump upwards, reflecting again. That would hit me, or if I shoot the cannonball in another direction, I can get punished for the landing leg. If I'm back there though, I can react before the cannonball hits me again. Getting me in a a definitely better spot. So this game you see how I started dropping through with Ken, uh, shooting Ken ball up here is good because it covers high. If I'm down here with Blunderbuss I'm also covering like this area right here which means I'm kinda safe there. So let's go on that no, don't worry, I said this game will be faster, which is oh, uh, which is for uh, one reason of that being that this already was the most interesting thing to talk about. Reverse crown hit, I just decided to go for a jab, trying to punish him there. That's kind of important to know in the matchup, I feel like Cannonball and... Byleth's arrow cancel each other out. Many Byleths have a habit of shooting arrow and immediately afterwards jumping, which by re by reshooting the cannonball in this situation can definitely cause them some trouble. You see me reading the roll back here, getting a kill for it. But what I want to talk about is this situation. I'm up on the platform shielding. And many, many players are now waiting for me to do a move. They believe, okay, I'm on platform and shield, not a place where I want to be. So I will do something, drop through or jump away and pretty much immediately. So they will be trying to punish that. In this situation, it wasn't, it didn't quite happen like that, as you will see. My left was down there trying to read a move of mine and as I saw him shielding down there I decided okay he will not instantly throw out an attack so I will jump forward air and he tried hitting me there a little too late which is why I punished him for it reading the rollback and getting the kill. That's also something I kind of like. That's just a sweet little combo. The, the up tilt into reverse crown on early percent is always great. Honestly, 
I know definitely not optimal. I was just kind of trying to style on him. Yeah, not gonna lie. Because at this point, I'm confident. I'm confident that I can win this game. And with it, this set, as, as I already said, I was already up. 1-0. Here I tried to reading a roll. Honestly didn't expect him to throw out a back air there. But he obviously did. I just shielded a lot, trying to come and trying not to get hit by back air and forward air. Here he died for throwing out back air. Because in game one, I was kinda getting messed up by his random aerials. Here we have a sweet little string. I had hoped for it. Sorry. I had hoped for him to air dodge in. He sadly didn't, so I only got 65% out of it. Early percent strings are important with K. With trying to read the air dodge in again. Something I very often do when I'm kinda clowning around. Those random back airs when running away are pretty good with K, I would say. They are a good option. Suck not hitting there. I'm getting hit a little more, but he used Violet Arrow in neutral against the character with a reflector, ending the game. That was the first video of talking about this IB Weekly Tournament. If you liked it, then leave a sub and or a like. Tell me in the comments, I hope I could help some of you and we will see hopefully again in the second video about this run.